With the transmission in park, firmly set the parking brake. With the hood open, locate the brake fluid reservoir at the back of the engine compartment. Crack open but do not remove the cap. This allows the brake fluid to be forced back into the reservoir while we compress the brake caliper piston during the removal process. If the brake fluid level is at or near the full mark, make room in the reservoir by drawing off enough fluid with a turkey baster to bring the level down near the add mark. Before jacking the wheel and tire assembly off the ground, loosen the lug nuts about one quarter turn each. Carefully jack one side of the axle high enough to get the respective tire an inch or two off the ground. Next, position your jack stand under the axle tube between the lower control arm mount and the sway bar bushing bracket. Slowly lower the axle onto the jack stand, ensuring it will be stable and secure. Next, we can remove the lug nuts and the wheel and tire, setting them out of the way. Be sure to put the five lug nuts in a place they won't accidentally be kicked across the floor. Before removing the old brake pads, spread newspaper below the work area. Then, using a brake cleaning solvent of your choice, remove all brake dust residue from the work area. Now before you ever use a solvent, always wear your safety glasses. In addition to keeping the solvent out of your eyes, you're also going to want to make sure that you keep the solvent off of your paint. After the solvent has flashed off, remove the two protective caps that cover the brake caliper mounting bolts. In order to remove the brake pads, we need to first compress the brake caliper piston back into the brake caliper. This is done with the help of a large C-clamp. Put the top of the clamp on the far side of the brake caliper and the bottom part of the clamp on the backing of the brake pad nearest you. As you tighten the C-clamp, the brake caliper piston will be forced back into the brake caliper, allowing clearance to remove the brake caliper assembly off of the caliper mounting bracket. Now, as you compress the calipers on the brakes, make sure that you check the fluid reservoir underneath the hood so that you don't overflow the fluid reservoir with brake fluid and spill it into your engine compartment. Using a 7mm Allen attachment, remove the upper and lower caliper mounting bolts.
Before we can remove the brake caliper, we have to remove these little clips. You can get those off by gently prying with a screwdriver. Once that's done, the caliper can be removed. You can see the inner brake pad and the outer brake pad. If you'll notice in profile, it's starting to get a little bit thin in the inside. The uh, other side of the Jeep is very thin. So it's good practice not to let this hang by the brake hose. So instead we're going to put it on the control arm as soon as we remove the inner brake pad, which we remove just by pulling. The outer brake pad just slides off through the grooves in the caliper mounting bracket. Prior to installing the new brake pads, take a moment to make sure the brake caliper and caliper mounting bracket are clean and free of any braking residue. Some areas were likely protected during the initial cleaning by the caliper and old brake pads themselves. With all surfaces properly cleaned, we will now apply anti-squeal compound to the backing of the new brake pads. So now, without getting your now greasy fingers on the surface of the brake pads, we're going to want to reinstall the new brake pad in the caliper. And just it's a press fit. You can push on the side, just make sure you don't push on the pad itself. We'll also apply a small amount of anti squeal compound to the caliper mounting brackets. Be very careful not to get any on the brake rotors themselves. This is used to prevent the brake pads and the caliper from resonating, which sounds like a very high-pitched squeal. It doesn't take much, just a little bit. On the back side, it'll be easiest to apply the compound if you use a Q-tip. Otherwise, with your finger, you're liable to get it in places you don't want it to be. You can tell the outside brake pad because the backing has no bracket that attaches to the caliper. It slides freely on its own. So this will be the outside brake, brake pad. So we're going to apply some anti-squeal compound on the back of that. Install the new outer brake pad by sliding it into the respective grooves of the caliper mounting bracket. If the brake piston is not retracted enough to allow for the additional width of the new, thicker brake pads, installing the brake caliper can be more difficult. Clean the caliper mounting bolts off with solvent and paper towels. Then apply a thin coat of high temperature disc brake grease to the smooth sliding surface of the bolts before reinstallation.
Tighten the bolts to between 21 and 30 foot-pounds using a torque wrench. Reinstall both caps. Mount the wheel and tire assembly. Tighten all five lug nuts in a star pattern, torquing to 95 foot-pounds with the torque wrench. After lowering the vehicle to the ground, re-torque the lug nuts to 95 foot-pounds 